The Super Metal Brothers podcast is the best. Really great stuff. I was in my car listening, and I was like, there just is not a better podcast. All right. Well, welcome to the Super Metal Bros podcast. This is episode eight. We have something special in store. How you doing, motherfuckers? So this episode, we're doing what we're calling Shredder's Collective. Same idea we did with uh, Fresh Baked Breakdowns. We're just picking some of our favorite fucking solos, dude, that we want to wink off to, and we're going to surprise each other with them. Nailed it. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. I know you have a context for Shredder's Collective, but I wanted to, to bring out something that I don't know if everybody knows about. So there's this band. They're called Shrezzers. Have you heard of them? Yeah. Yeah, I think we've talked about them before. Yeah, they've got like the logo as the Brazzers. Yes, yeah, so that's what I was going to cover. So their original name, they're from Russia. I thought they were from France or some shit. No, they're from Russia. They don't sound like anything you would expect to come from Russia, but okay. I mean, they're new albums. Feel free to fact check us, by the way, because yeah. we're wrong like yeah, fucking wrong. all the time. Yeah, come out the woodwork, all the gatekeepers for Shrezzers. Their new album's even called Sex and Sax. It actually shreds, too. It's it's actually pretty good. Their original name was called The Shredding Brazzers, and the Brazzers Brazzers was like Brazzers, like the porn site, yeah. like logo. And then they got scared that they might have some copyright infringement. So they changed it to Shrezzers. They combined Which is the better word. anyways, if you yeah. ask me. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool name. We're going to Potty Snatcher March 9th. Potty Snatcher? <laughs> what did I say? You said potty snatcher. Potty snatcher. But I was thinking about all those crowd killers, dude. And I, I don't know if I'm going to get into the pit for that one, man. It's a little scary. So you haven't been to body snatcher. Like, no. have you? I've been, dude. That shit gets fucking rowdy, dude. It's insane. I'll tell you the story. I was at body snatcher. It was actually a Lorna show, but it was Lorna Shore, Enterprise Earth, body snatcher, and within destruction. I mean, dude, nothing compared to body snatcher's fucking pit. Apparently there's the these hardcore groups, I don't, I don't want to say they're gangs, but I don't know what else to call them, called the Five Nines. And they wear like fucking Hawaiian shirts. They beat up drug dealers. I guess that's like how they fucking white knight for the hardcore kids or whatever. There was this one dude who's just built like a fucking brick house, man. He was just like indiscriminately punching whoever just like happened to fucking be in front of him. At one point, this dude like does a fucking Superman punch and like his forward momentum is just like nonstop. It's like something you saw of a movie where like the crowd just splits like it's fucking Moses parting the sea. <laughs> yeah. And there was this girl at the very back of the fucking mosh pit, dude, way back into the crowd, dude. Had no idea what was about to fucking hit her, dude. And I don't think he could even stop himself, but he's like full force just Superman punches this girl right in the fucking face. You just see the sheer terror and she's just like, and then, like tries to clench up like to break Herself. He just like, I'm the juggernaut bitchster. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the juggernaut bitch. Yeah. So here's a mosh pit legend for you. Fucking Cal L of the five nines Kal-El with this, of the five nines. With oh, this yeah. Superman punch. You fucking mosh pit legend. Uh, don't hit fucking women in the, <laughs> yeah, in the, in the, in the mosh pit. It's like that new, uh, there's a new TikTok trend where like somebody does something stupid and then like the song comes on and it goes, dumb ways to die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is, that's probably what that scene's like is standing there her getting fucking cal l punched by a motherfucker but that got me to that got me to thinking too and it kind of it's funny with the that we're calling it shredders collective because it reminded me so we used to live in uh cabazon which is like fucking butt fuck egypt of the mojave desert and is it um, the mojave yeah it's in the mojave oh, well, that sounds like a word you just made up but okay cool i <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, live in the mojave <laughs> <laughs> mm. yeah it doesn't um the, the aesthetic doesn't match how, <laughs> how it's said for right sure. Right next to the Morongo Indians. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Anyways, so I, I learned at a young age that you can't just go outside and fucking crowd kill thin air. You do enough karate moves outside, you're going to, it's like Street Fighter. It's like challenge accepted. Well, especially in California, we got to set this up right because I, I just you know met some people here in Dallas that moved here from California and I didn't realize it's a uniquely Californian uh, experience to have bum stories. Bum stories 
are very California because California has the craziest but also friendliest bums out of any state. I believe it's because the weather's so good, so they're like not upset about be living on the street all the time. Well, that's maybe. not that's not the case in the dead ass summer of a fucking desert. That's a good point. It was like 120. So this bum in particular was not very happy. In fact, I went outside because I wanted to learn karate and shit when I was a kid. And so my meth addict parents answer to this is they found a gi at like a thrift store. And they're like, here, all right, you're fucking badass. Now go out there and fucking <laughs> practice. Do Hadoukens and shit. Yeah, yeah, self-taught Taekwondo. Yeah, you throw enough fucking Mortal Kombat punches in thin air, dude. A fucking, uh, you're setting yourself up for, for a fight and someone's going to want to challenge it. Yeah, especially so, when you're like seven years old. <laughs> so this fucking bum, which I think might have been a Native American too, which was fucking weird. But like, dude, I, I mean, I was a young kid, so my imagination runs wild with it. But I remember like I literally felt like I was in like a fucking anime, like I was in Ninja Scroll or some shit where like all of a sudden there's antagonist. His hair is like blowing in the wind. <laughs> And like, he like looks at me, he's like, you're disrespecting my dojo. <laughs> yeah. And then our, our New Yorker stepdad, fucking meth head was like, Hey, you get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get the fuck out of here. I want to see someone smash you in the fucking face. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, but, and dude, like all these fucking homeless dudes, he had like a whole posse. It was like if Shredder fucking was recruiting the foot clan at like the soup kitchen or some <laughs> shit, dude. And all these fucking bombs just start coming out like i swear they're doing like fucking front flips out of fucking trash cans and shit dude <laughs> i gotta spice it up but uh, <laughs> very nice it doesn't matter how much fucking uh drunk karate you know because this is he's not a mosh pit legend but he's a legend he was the fucking drunken fist the drunken fist yeah. hell yeah that's definitely him not even the drunken fist is the match for the fucking meth head new yorker dude <laughs> yeah no <laughs> get the fuck out of here you pack the cat in the back and get the fuck out. That's probably more Boston, actually, now that I think about it, but whatever. <laughs> um, so, and even there, there's two other legends that live there. So that town, Cabazon, if, if you're not familiar, is the place where those dinosaur statues that were in Pee Wee Herman's yeah. Big Adventure. Yeah. That So we were in a very famous town of uh, Cabazon, California. There was this inn that we lived in. This is going to be a segment for now on, because I got so many stories about this town, but there was that inn. There was a bar called like the Moose Lodge or some shit. Yeah. Yeah. Which is like a private, like a subscription service bar. <laughs> so you could walk in and then they had like a convenience store that wasn't a gas station and then a junkyard. That that was all there was in the city. There was like a neighborhood across the tracks, but we never went across there. So to give you some sensory, this is basically in the desert where like fucking people either went to hide from the police, like hide out or like you were out there burying a fucking body. Yeah, basically. Definitely. Like, there was like a mountain that you could see from our house that had a rock that looked like a skull on it. It was a giant fucking rock. It was like one of those glacier rocks that gets yeah. left behind. Um, yeah. So we used to have to walk to a convenience store to pick up shit. So, you know, our mom could cook dinner or whatever. There were these two bums that always sat outside the moose, moose lodge, fishnets and sailor Bob. Yeah. We'd see them every day. And uh sailor Bob, he had like this low, like smoker voice, like, Hey kid. <laughs> yeah. Like, he sounded like fucking Beetlejuice. Like, Hey bro, you got syrup. And then fishnets who by his name, I'm sure you can guess wore shorty shorts and fishnet leggings and he was he was a dude with like long hair fish boy and he talked like this yeah and so one day we went down and we cashed like a 20 to you know buy some stuff and you know we were kids so we just put the money in the bag like the change was floating around so you could see it through the bag and we walked by fucking sailor bob and fucking uh fishnets and uh <laughs> sailor bob goes i can see your money showing yeah and then, <laughs> and, then, and then fucking fishnets goes oh he's helping you out a lot because, you know, he's been here forever in a day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that shit? Dude, they were a power couple. Those people, uh, I doubt they're alive. We actually gave them a dog. <laughs> 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 because our dog had puppies and we didn't know it. There's like fucking 10 people live in that town. So we're like, hey, All you right. want a fucking dog? One more spin off and then we'll get into the Shredders Collective. But uh, we had this dog named Shorty that we called the Rotcock. Oh, yeah. He was half Cocker Spaniel, half Rottweiler. And he spread his fucking seed.
weed everywhere. Oh, dude, that dog laid dick like dude, nobody's remember business. My brother had a, a pit bull named Tara just towered over this short ass little dog. Shorty got her. He, this dude had the biggest fucking dick, dude. And Tara like freaked out while, you know, they were doing their thing and fucking dragged Shorty by his dick. He yeah. got drug around <laughs> drug. the air. And there was like a dust cloud going everywhere behind him. And he had that squinting like he was mid orgasm the whole entire time with a smile on his face. Just to, to lay out what this dog looked like, he was ridiculous. He had the coloring of a Rottweiler. So the brown and black in the typical places for a Rottweiler. But then everything else was Cocker, Cocker Spaniel. Spaniel. So he had like the, sh- the curly long hair and short little legs. But he, he the only thing he really got from the Rottweiler side was coloring and the dick. Yeah. Limp. Went halfway up his body. It wasn't like a fucking red rocket, dude. It was like a red fucking megaton. <laughs> it was like, a red ICBM, dude. Yeah. <laughs> we always thought that he couldn't get dogs that we had. We were in a tweaker family, so we didn't have the money to get our, our dogs fixed. So we're like, oh, he's too short. And we never learned our lesson. That dog had probably about 120 puppies yeah. in the time that we had. Oh, easily, dude. He, I mean, he got two of our dogs. Like the litters were like crazy huge too. They were like nine puppies and I'm like nine, ten. The bust of that dog would put fucking Johnny Sins to shame, dude. <laughs> I, I had to take him to the pound finally when mom got locked up. That's more lore for later. But the uh, I had to take him to the pound and he was like 15 years old at that time. I guarantee you that dog lived another five years at least. I kind of hope so, dude. And I hope it was a good one, man. Yeah, right? he, he was a good dog. He was a good dog. Despite all his fucking shenanigans. I mean, he had a good time, dude. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyways, <laughs> he lived let's up. have a good time now in Shredder's Collective. Yeah. Before we go in, though, I wanted to cover archetypes of solos real quick so we know the criteria of what we're choosing here. So we're playing solos, clips of solos that are our favorite solos. Really, there's no rules. But there's some things that I particularly look for. I am a guitarist. I lean more towards the technical side. So first thing is you got the technical solo, right? Just really fast double picking. You know, a lot of the 80s and 90s heavy metal guys like Kirk Hammett, you know, great guitarists existed at the time. They used wah-wah pedals a lot. Um, that's what gave them that like really like wonky sound of all those like God smack and, yeah. you know, Metallica solos. They felt things a lot. So feeling it out is like when they hold the note for a long time. They make the yow kind face. Of improvising. That's one archetype. The other archetype is people who do like more of the Wigney Malmsteen stuff. Enterprise Earth does a lot of this. The sweet picking, like you're mentioning. Yeah. It sounds very classical in style. So you got, you know, fast pickers, you got the guys who feel things out. Then you got the the sweepers. And then you got the guys who do, I call it like kind of a subgenre of it is alien solos made famous by Slayer, where the solo almost doesn't even go with the song. It's just wild noises for like 30 seconds. And then they go back into the song. Rings of Saturn does that a lot. Yeah. Uh, Slayer made, it was master of it. A lot of the death metal bands in the, the 80s and 90s did that as well. And one of my favorite things about solos is they do this thing. I call it framing. Most of my favorite solos do this. The best example I can think of this is Ozzy Osbourne, No More Tears. That's a Zach Wilde solo. Song just like decides to completely change and it goes into like this lighter thing that happens and all of a sudden Zach Wilde comes in with this real feely uh, solo and then he just goes the fuck off and does Zach Wilde shit yeah. for like a minute and the whole song changes with the guitar. So the solo is what's controlled the path of the music. Yeah. Another example is White Snake in the Steel of the Night. If you ever heard that song, if you've never heard it, go to In the Steel of the Night and just listen to that part. It's one of the greatest moments in metal. Now, anybody who would deny fucking hair metal, like especially like you listen to August, dude. You listen to fucking Enterprise Earth. You listen to bands like this, dude. They clearly have uh, fucking clearly. influence from hair metal bands. So here's my criteria. I was looking for framing specifically because that's my favorite types of solos. I don't like people who just do the status quo type solos. I want something in there that's unique yeah. that I've never heard before. So just a, a fast sweep, the super technical, I like it, but it's not something I would select for this. It has to have a couple unique parts. It 
has to transition. It has to lead the music usually. At least that was my criteria for this episode. Framing, leading the music, lots of changes, and something unique. I wasn't trying to follow a criteria, dude. I was just like, yeah, this is shit that makes me air guitar at home. I did my best to like go out of the bounds of like metalcore and deathcore. And I mean, these are pretty adjacent. And I feel like a lot of my favorite solos can just be attributed to metalcore. We have a lot more simple simplicity going on, but the currents, you know, Misha Mansoor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many big soloists in metalcore. Yeah, definitely. I say let's just get into it. So here's my first pick. This one goes on for a minute, so just get comfy, dude. Dude, it brings a fucking tear to my eye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, about it. No one's great surprise. That was Selkie's The Endless Obsession by Between the Bears. If you haven't heard it, he starts repeating that line at the end. It seems like five minutes, but you'd love every minute of it. Between the Buried and Me are legendary status, progressive bands, really, in my lifetime, definitely. Well, and the thing is, I haven't met a single person who is a musician who plays an instrument or has some like... Oh, he doesn't love BT Bam? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get into them for their actual music. I don't know if you remember. They did a full cover album album the anatomy of yeah i think was the name of it and that was a ridiculously good fucking album and their picks man like they had fucking um queen bicycle yeah was on it they had had metallica they had sepultura i believe they had um faith no more yeah they did a faith no more cover yeah again probably one of the best cover albums done in like that genre now it's time for my first so oh i'm excited so um, I'm just going to bring it up and we'll talk about it afterwards. You see if I can guess who it is. It, it's about to go off. Yeah, I have no idea. Those Jun Juns that compliment it. Oh, 
these are all. God, who was it, dude? That is Morbid Angel. Oh, fuck. The song's called Summoning Redemption. It's off of, that album came out, I think, 2002. So it was a later album from them because they had been around since the 80s at that yeah, point. I, I knew for sure it was death metal yeah. based on the... Dude, I, yeah, again, I love those fucking riffs that were just like backing up the solo, man. He's one of my favorite death metal singers, too. He yeah. does like that, I stand before the... Yeah. Yeah, he does yeah. like that type of shit, and he's just fucking insane. But their guitarist, dude, that was their most experimental album. I remember reading the interview they did for it. Part of that solo was they put a mic in a salad bowl to get the sound <laughs> at the very end where they did that like really ethereal like almost arpeggio type run that falls kind of under an alien style solo it like kind of almost doesn't go with the music or it's in spite of the music nah dude that shit fucking shredded dude i'm yeah. gonna that's going on my playlist for sure <laughs> nice all right so here's my next one let's see you i i've showed you this album before so i'm sure you'll hear it but let's see On. Yeah. I knew by the voice. Yeah. Is that off of Crack the Sky? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I figured. They have that old school vibes in their solos. Yeah, like definitely. It's, it's like a... It's more like heavy metal, maybe even rock and roll. But they're definitely pro- they're definitely a progressive metal band, but they've oh, got yeah. like folk elements, dude. They've got like... Oh, dude, they're, they're fucking great. They're musicians. timeless, dude. Yeah, they're, they're fucking they timeless. timeless, dude. Um, yeah, you, you, I pull up that album and the one right before it, the one with the like weird czar looking dude on it. Their new album... Um, came out last year too, I think. Uh, Grim and Hushed. That's what it was called. Okay, yeah. I love fucking Mastodon, man. I didn't know by the guitar playing, but I definitely knew by the voice. You can't deny that voice. All right, let's... All right, so we're ready for my next one. Yep. This is another one that I think is going to surprise you, but I think you might get this one. I think you might know it. So uh, here we go. Oh, by the way, this one's going to be long. The Human Abstract. Are we playing a solo? Oh, we are. I just wanted to put the breakdown in there because I'm funny. <laughs> but it starts right here. Yep. Yeah, so that was crossing the Rubicon by the human abstract, which is probably the best solo on the album and that album has a lot of fucking banger solos that on it. that is a good solo, dude that whole album so i i picked a song from that album as well did you yeah that, i already know which one it is then yeah so we'll we'll get into the reads with the human abstract after i play this solo. here we go that was different than what i was thinking you're i thought you were in a select vila
Dude, it actually makes me fucking sad that this band isn't like leading the charge nowadays. Oh, dude, they were so fucking good. So I have a story about them. I'm glad you picked one by them because they uh, like they were the one of the most underrated bands of all time, dude. Uh, they just I could see how a lot day. of people got put off by like the vocalist. Yeah, because that was, first vocalist was eh. on that album. He was good. Yeah, like that part. But that I just snuck in that breakdown. Yeah. When he says what it means to respect me. Like, yeah. Dude, that's such a fucking badass line. Uh, yeah, but then he has like the parts that are almost like a uh, fucking Led Zeppelin. Where he's like, no, there's one really cringy song on there that where he does like some kind of classical stuff yet yeah, but they were super progressive so the story i was going to tell about them i said i was getting in progressive technical death metal and i was listening you know cyborg octopus and sorrow eater which i think falls under that genre to yeah. some extent also gray lotus which they're fucking awesome yeah Ooh, i'm excited for that we got to go to that one i yeah. checked out that band archaic too and they're really fucking good too uh, gray lotus is in my top right now they're actually getting up there with the salt soul album but uh, so i went on to reddit and i asked for suggestions and the first suggestion that came around was Fallujah because that just fell right into what I was listening to and uh, then somebody gave me this really extensive list you know Reddit people and he was like here's a list of tech uh, progressive tech death metal bands that I listen to that I think you'll like third on the list was the human abstract and I was like hmm because we were on a progressive tech death metal like subreddit and I even put I was like it's interesting you put you know human abstract on there because I would never consider them anywhere close to death metal and he was like yeah he goes maybe they're not progressive tech maybe they're just technical death metal i was like i th really think you're missing my point <laughs> <laughs> their second album sucked balls yeah uh, the I, I didn't even listen to midway it. to heaven or something like that but um the third album they brought out digital veil i could see why he thought they were probably like progressive oh, death do they, metal do they move that direction yeah they got a lot harder with that album so let's move on to the next one next one's on me this is another one i i i think you might get but let's let's just listen to it i've heard this before Oh, what the fuck? guitar yep the sounds are not of this planet Ooh. it's gotta be periphery right yeah it's Misha that's what I thought Pick. There, were, I had a couple. I was like periphery songs. I was gonna put down the pipe. I was like, I, I bet he'll pick one. So I was like, I'm just not even gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, no, that was reptile. That solo oh, doesn't even okay. come in till 10 15. Yeah, on see, reptile. I didn't really listen to Hail Stan, dude. Misha has some like just signature fucking sounds dude, that like his the second command you hear of the guitar is ridiculous, dude. It's the precision that he was able to achieve in that solo that that blows my mind every time I hear it. Because I've heard other guitars do those type of runs, but his are so on point that it just makes it so much better and that for that lead in riff that he does that that sounded like a humming car or something like that yeah it's also some, like some tom morello shit almost yeah like he's just so gifted dude and i shit on periphery all the time like on the yeah, social yeah. media we're just shit like posters to, yeah i like to make fun of them because i love them so much yeah it's all out of love dude 
really is. But um, no, I mean, he's leading the way and he's so humble about his guitar work for the most part. Oh, yeah. Like he acts like he's a fucking Super idiot, dude, dude. But it's like, yeah. nah, dude. Because you see these people that like the second they pick up like that, whatever their instrument is, it's like they view the world completely different. And you see that a lot with guitar. That shit always fascinates me, dude. When people are playing the guitar, it's like, how do you think? You know what I mean? Like, where do these sounds come from? I wonder. Yeah, dude. Uh, I think Joe Rogan on it, the Joe Rogan experience, he said one time, he was talking about comedy, but he believes that ideas are almost living things. An idea, it surfaces in your brain because it wants to be known. It wants to come into the world and you got to take it and turn it into something. That's what they call the muse, right? Yeah. There was a God assigned to that whole idea Yeah. of like, somehow you're just gifted this. I've done that when I've when I've been writing a song of my own, I just come up with something like it just comes out of nowhere. It's like, I'm just riffing with it. And all of a sudden it's just, I, and I haven't written anything prolific, but it's crazy how you're like, Whoa, I didn't even know I had that in me. I wasn't thinking that 10 seconds ago. Yeah. So that's how, that's how it happens. But then you have a guy who can take that idea and apply that level of skill to it. Like Misha. And then you get a solo like you just heard. Yeah, dude, he's definitely going to go down as one of the greats. Oh, he's legendary, dude. All right. Let's see if you can guess this one. I know for a fact you've heard this album. Album, but it's been a minute. This to me is, I feel like he's just such an underrated fucking guitarist. That was a sick run. Short but sweet. Who was that? That is Patrick Somale from Reflections. Oh shit! Yeah, that was that Reflections. Yeah. Okay, I haven't heard that. Which album is that? Exist. Of? Exist. Okay, yeah. I haven't heard that in a long dude, time. Dude, that is such a banger of a fucking album. Yeah, that dude. album was. Great, I mean, their dude. whole discography, I love front to back. But man, Patty is such a fucking underrated guitarist, dude. Because you remember they went kind of viral. Him and fucking Charles buried alive now. Remember when they had those guitar playthroughs of them playing their shit? Oh yeah, dude, it was like fucking mind blowing. Yeah, I I hope Reflections makes a major comeback and they kind of get their day. But they've kind of leaned lately more into like the death core and thaw if you listen to willow and they had an ep after the fact yeah they're kind of embracing thaw so i'm interested to see where they'll go next yeah uh who who has the the new project surgeon uh jake wolf from reflections yeah yeah he's one of the guitarists right uh he does fucking everything dude. yeah is he, that him playing drums on social yeah. media dude he's fucking ridiculous dude, his kit drums. is fucking insane yeah it too, sounds dude. good as shit though yeah Okay, so the next song, I, I'm pretty sure you'll get this one too, but this one isn't acrobatics. This one is pure feel. I specifically want you to listen to kind of after the solo ends, the vocalist comes back in and the guitarist hits this one single note while the vocalist is singing. And it's just so perfect. It makes me cringe up my face every time in a good way. And like my, it gives me the goosebumps every time. And it's just a note. That's all it is. It's just expert composition, I guess. Whitechapel. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And this 
is almost a fire right here. I love how he hit that fucking note right Yeah, I just held it. So that's Kin by Whitechapel. It's it's the title track off of that. I, I think that's a concept album that they did. That fucking album is great because it's like, it's kind of like when BT Bam did all the covers and they kind of strayed away from their normal thing. Yeah. It's just so far departed from Whitechapel, but they're just showing off what they can do and expanding their like their musical vocabulary. A lot of people were pissed off about that album. Hardcore Whitechapel yeah, fans. Yeah, no, I love it. Dude. I think it's a fucking masterpiece, dude. Yeah. If you're going to go away from what you normally do, that's how you do it. Yeah, exactly. Like, it dude. was so fucking well executed. And you know what? Always, uh, this is another thing that fascinates me with like, you know, guitarists and music in general is like the geography of it, right? So what I mean by that is Whitechapel's from Tennessee, but you get a lot of those bluesy fucking guitars yep. in there, man. Yep. And it's so, when you get those Southern guitars, you can hear it, dude. And it's so crazy to me how like just being in a certain place can, you know, shape how you pick up an instrument yeah yeah you hear the influence definitely yeah all right so my next you're not gonna be able to guess this one <laughs> okay that's the same with my next one too um this one's a little bit longer i think you'll be pleasantly surprised to learn who the guitarist of this is <laughs> Oh, interesting. This one goes in, so just strap in. Yeah, I don't know who it is, but it sounds like one of those more like virtuoso guys, like a Pliny style, but I could be wrong. You're not far off, but you'll have no idea who it is. But you do know about the guitarist. Is that Jason Richardson? Nope. No? Okay, it sounds like one of those guys. Another little part after this he ends on. That riff is pretty sick too though. Coming. It sounds like selfies. Kind, kind of. of. Yeah. Faster. 
I, I'm stumped, dude. Who's that? Okay, so that is Gabe from Enterpriser's first band, Delusions of Grandeur. That was Gabe Mangold. Oh, shit. Yeah. Nice. Great fucking pick, dude. Dude, does it? That just yeah. shows like the range that dude has as a yeah, fucking guitarist. I would have never guessed him on that. I mean, now as you say it, it makes sense. You could tell he is influenced by BT Bam as well. Yeah. Great pick, dude. Yeah. That was a really good pick. I love that solo because it was it had a flavor to it. I, I don't know. It was just like, it, it kind of sounded like it could have been like a solo album. Yeah, like thing a virtuoso fucking like, guitarist. Like a, like a Jacob Saiteki or Pliny Jason or something. Jason Richardson. Yeah, yeah, Jason Richardson. But then then the singer came and I was like, oh shit. So yeah, no, that was a great pick. I'm going to I'm gonna check that album out. Yeah, that is a Reclamation by Delusions of Grandeur. Okay. So yeah, my next one, I don't think you're going to get this one. So yeah, and I don't know if I mentioned this in the requirements. It doesn't have to be a guitar. So <laughs> you dick. <laughs> and he plays Bleed by Meshuggah. Ooh. Oh, and it's it's about to get better too. The way this this uh, guitar comes in one of my favorite ways to come in right of recent oh so this is recent to you oh yeah this came out two weeks ago to pronounce this but it's Ikus by Ni Oblivascaris. Oh shit, dude. Yeah. How fucking rad is that fucking solo in there? They just dropped an album or what? They just dropped a single about two weeks ago. That's the new single on their new album that's coming up. They released Grail last year, and that one's Ecoose, which is the newest one they just released. And the whole song is great. Oh, dude, I believe it, dude. Their violinist is fucking oh, amazing. Oh, they have a dedicated violinist? Yeah, they have a, well, they have a lot of violin, so I assume he's dedicated. Yeah, because that, that sounds like legit violin. Oh, dude, that's a fucking sick violin solo, dude. That yeah. was like up there with guitar solos. And then the way he comes in with those like alien sounds, and then all of a sudden just hits that craziness one thing about them is sometimes they do things like they could have cut it in half you yeah know? they're one of those bands that does, has no problem doing a 15 minute song yeah which i love yeah. dude and i that's what i like the guitar is great they're extremely skilled musicians he has a lot of like iron maiden style influence the vocalist does and the band is just fucking great dude yeah i'd never heard of them until recently and these two singles they just dropped i can't wait for that album to come out it's going to be an experience but that song is uh it's like fucking 13 minutes and it goes through everything you can possibly imagine the fucking kitchen sinks in it so yeah, fuck yeah i wanted something recent on yeah there, there you and go I dug deep for that one and once i heard that solo i was like there's no way that can't be on there yeah all right um, you'll probably guess this one right away
I don't know who that was. Seriously? That's Periphery. That's off P2. See, I didn't listen to P2. Dude, I'm telling you, that's our best one. If any of you out there just have like some fucking face melting solos, dude, send them our way, dude. I love that shit. Yeah. I love fucking playing air guitar in my fucking briefs. That reptile solo. Yeah, that which, shit was insane. You need to go back and listen to that song. Spencer fucking kills that song. That's when he does like the goddamn thing. Yeah. Like a slap in the face to the gods. Goddamn. He does that. <laughs> the song is great. He has a lot of catchy vocal parts in it. And then they have like the guy I assume is the voice for fucking Optimus Prime in the like Michael Bay movies. Yeah. Do this long talk about like how the reptile people are watching you. They see all. It literally has everything. In a world where ass fucking is not <laughs> uncommon. <laughs> But also we're robots. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was a good one. You want to end it on that? Yeah. Um, again, if you got fucking some good solos, send them our way, dude. Uh, thanks for all the support, you know, from the regulars. Uh, we love you guys. Like, subscribe, follow us on all our bullshit, dude, and we'll keep making this content. And let us know what you guys want to fucking listen to, dude. If there's like another, you know, something similar to fucking Shredders Collective or Fresh Baked, let us know. Yeah. And uh, if you don't follow us on YouTube, it's because only gay vampires don't follow us on YouTube. YouTube, so and if you are a gay vampire and you follow us welcome we wish that they would follow us all right praise the sun motherfuckers word to your moms